Today I'm going to show you how to improve the PvP circuits we made in my last PvP video. One of the big issues with the first PvP tutorial was that you would keep your weapons once you die. So today we're going to fix that, we're going to add in events to kind of clean up and make the circuits better, and we're going to add in health bars above our heads so other people know how low our health is. But RCL, circuits are hard, can you just make it an invention? Why yes, I can. Introducing the RCL Infinite PvP Circuit. All you need to do is spawn it in, follow the steps to get it working, spawn in some weapons, and bam, you have a fully functional, free-for-all PvP map. Now, if you don't want the invention and you just want to see and learn the circuits, I will have a room set up for you, and I'll give you that room a little bit later in the video. All right, so we're starting off today exactly where we left off in the last PvP tutorial. I will leave it down below if you need to start from the beginning. So let's start off right here where the player joined the room. We're gonna keep the player joined. We're gonna keep the if player is local, but we're gonna move the set position and the health to 100 into its own event. So let's start off by unhooking those and we're just gonna move them out of the way, but then we can just hook up the is local to set HUD element and let's organize these a little bit more. I did a bad job the first time. Well, since this is gonna be its own event later, I'm gonna go ahead and get an event sender for that future event. We're just gonna pop it in at the end right here. So I'm gonna rename this bool variable to can take damage because that's what it is. It, it determines when you can and when you cannot take damage. Now the kind of only sucky part about that is that now all of the other bool variables that are the same thing, you have to go rename them as well. Okay, now that they're all renamed, I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up, but we'll define it and everything later. So we're gonna put the player respawning and setting their health to 100 as its own event. The reason that we're doing this is because it's something that's gonna repeat over and over again in the room. So we kinda want that to be its own event. So let's start with an event definition. We are going to configure it and we're gonna rename it as player reset. This is now the player reset event. And we're also going to add a property called player and make it into a player port. This will end up being the player who is actually being reset. And now you can see on our event definition, we have a little player to represent. That's, that's the port that we have. Now let's go back to that event sender. We're going to configure it and have it send the player reset and have it set to local. Now in a recent update, they changed this player thing to say none instead of being the local player. Personally, I think it's dumb because it's pretty much always the local player, but make sure that you click on your wire tool, make sure that you click on it so that it's local player. Now we wanna get an event receiver. We're going to configure that event receiver and have it receive the player reset. Again, we made the player reset up there. That's our custom event. Now we're also gonna use another if player is local chip. So we'll just clone that and bring it down. Hook that up, hook up the player to that so it only runs on the local player system. So just hook up your set position. The target is gonna be that player who's reset. The position is gonna be the vector from up, up at our little platform up there. I have a vector chip over here that we use, so I'm just gonna copy that and bring it down. Just remember that these numbers on your vector create, they're gonna be different depending on where your little flat platform is. All right, so now we need to go over here to our win player dies circuits and stuff, and we can delete this respawn, this health, and we just want to unhook the set HUD element and we're gonna bring it down over to our new event. Let's go ahead and hook up that. Go ahead and hook up the health to it. All right, so now they join, it sets their element and says, hey, we have a health bar enabled. Then it says they can take damage. Then it sends the player reset event. Then it sends our new player reset event, which then goes down here, says, go ahead and set the position to up there on our little platform, right? Set their health to 100 and go ahead and give their health 100. On to weapon damage. Okay, so for this, we start at our player hit event. A lot of people seem to kind of have issues with this. They didn't see the hit event when they tried to configure their receiver. That's because it's a custom event that we made. 
So you have to make the hit event. We're, we're leaving this all the same. If player's local is the same, this is all the same. The part where it gets different is the set HUD element value. So what we're doing is we're gonna take the set HUD value chip and make it its own event. Like I said earlier, setting the value of somebody's health bar is gonna happen over and over again. So we're gonna have that be its own event. But for this one, we actually don't need an event sender. So first off, let's delete this chip and we're just gonna hook our health directly up to this if chip. Now we're gonna come down here and we're gonna get another event receiver. I'm just gonna clone this one. Then let's configure it and you're gonna see on here, we have health changed. So what that really means is every time that your health variable changes, this event receiver is gonna go off. Every time that you get hit with a weapon and it subtracts from your total, this event receiver is gonna go off. Every time your health is set to 100, this event receiver is gonna go off. And what we're gonna do is connect this new event receiver up to this set HUD element. So again, this means every time you get hurt, it's gonna come over here and set your HUD element to whatever your new health value is. Now let's go back up here for a second. Everything after this can take damage bool that's false, everything down here is gonna be for when the player dies. So let's go ahead and unhook that. We're gonna select all these and we're gonna move them because we are gonna make them into their own event, which means we need to get an event sender and hook it up just after the can take damage pool. So right now what we have is player joins, sets up all their stuff so they can take damage, they get their, their HUD enabled. Once they're reset, this will respawn them in the top up there, set their health to 100, set their little bar to 100, and every time they take damage, it's gonna change their health, which is gonna go down here to the health changed and also update their little bar on the bottom of their screen. Now within this, of course, it does check to see if they died. And that's what we're doing next. All right, for player death, let's go ahead and make another new event. So we need an event definition, gonna configure it. We're gonna call it player death. Let's go back to this event sender that we made, whoops, just a second ago. Configure it to send the player death and keep it local. Now let's get all those extra chips that we moved out of the way and bring them down, down here. You should have an add roll, a delay, a remove roll, and a can take damage set to true. Now we're gonna get another event receiver, configure it to player death. And again, we're gonna get a if player is local, just to make sure it's on the local player's system. I'm actually gonna take these chips and move them over a little bit. We need a space in between these two because we're gonna put stuff. Next, we're gonna get not one, but two delay chips here and there. So we are going to hook up the is local to the run on the first delay. Keep both of these zero, by the way. And then we're gonna hook up the run on that first delay to the run on the second delay. And then the after delay, we're gonna hook up to our player add role. Whoopsie, I made a mistake. Go back to your if chip at the end of your player hit circuit and disconnect this bull right here and then hook up the new player death event. Then we're gonna take this false can take damage and move it down here and we're going to hook it up right after the player add death roll and then hook that up to the delay now here we're actually going to get another event sender and we're going to hook it up after the delay and then we are going to configure it so that it is the reset event this this makes me so mad that it does this now. It's just it's such it's like a stupid little extra step that we have to do now. For why? I'm sure they had a good reason for it, but man, it's annoying. All right, so now what's going on is the player gets hit. They get hit so much that they die, which sends the player death. The player death comes down here. It says, "All right, uh, once they die, add the roll of death roll, which freezes them. Tells them they can't take damage anymore, so people can't shoot you while you're already dead." Then after three seconds, it'll do the player reset, which up here, if you remember player reset is set position up there on a little platform, give us health, set our health bar to 100. So then once they get reset, we're gonna remove that roll so they're not frozen anymore and we're gonna let them take damage. But what I'm gonna do is clone this three second delay here 
and put it in between the remove roll and the can take damage. People have been shooting at people who are on the platform and going ahead and killing them. So let's just make it so they have three seconds of invincibility essentially. So again, one of the biggest issues with the initial circuits was that it would let you keep your weapons once you die. So let's go back to our weird little delay delay circuit here. Now these delays, we're not actually gonna use them as delays, we're gonna use it as a splitter. There are other ways to do this. I tried them, they didn't work as good, so this is what we're gonna do. And we're gonna need three chips. We're gonna need the player get equipped objects, and we're gonna need two unequipped objects chips. Since these are both zero delays, they should go almost at the same time. So we're gonna hook up a run to the first unequip object, and a after delay, which again is zero, to the second unequip. And then in our game, we only have left and right hands. We don't have holsters or anything. So whatever object is in their dominant hand, unequip it. Whatever object is in their off hand, if they have two weapons or whatever hand they're using, it doesn't matter. Have that unequip. Okay, and then we're gonna switch this to local player. So now whenever they die, it's gonna do all of these circuits down here, but it's also gonna run these circuits that will unequip whatever objects they have in their hands. We also have another thing we need to do here, and that is modify the dead roll so that they can't pick up weapons once they're dead. We need to find the roll chip. I don't know where it is. This is not good. Where's the roll chip? Somebody had to have, is that it? Oh, it's right here in front of my face. Let's <laughs> just configure the roll chip, edit the roll. All right, and then we need to, let's see. Oh, I already have it set up, but you want to pick up restrictions, override it, and restrict all. All right, let's move on to putting health bars above your head. So we're going to need three chips for this. We need the player world UI constant, the display player world UI, and the set player world UI primary bar value. What a mouthful. First thing we need to do is configure the world UI constant. We are going to leave the name as it is. We want the primary bar enabled. We want max value to be all of that. Let's see, I'm gonna change the color to green because we want you know it to be a health bar. Secondary, we'll turn off. Oh, what, this is new. Enable when joining, this is new. Okay, well you might be able to, I haven't tested that, you might be able to use that right now. We're just gonna keep with what we're doing. Now let's take our display player world UI and we're gonna bring it over to our player joined circuits. Follow it all the way back until we get to the set HUD element. Then what we wanna do is just insert it in right here. So just put that there and then hook up the output to the can take damage. The target is our new world UI constant that we just did, the one that set primary bar. So we'll set that up over here and the player is local. Now after testing this, we kind of have to do something dumb in my opinion, but you know, rec room is rec room. So what we need to do is kind of get our set player world UI value, whatever, and bring it down close to our set HUD element value. We're gonna find that event receiver that we have that changes whenever the health changes and we're gonna clone that. Let's bring that over. And we're gonna hook that up here instead. So I thought you could just put them all together, but for some reason it doesn't work or it didn't work when I tested this. So on health change, set the world UI primary bar value on the local player to whatever value health is currently set at. If you want a copy of the circuits that you can just look at and take pictures of, go to the use code RCL one room. There'll be a door in there leading to PVP example circuits. If there's any suggestions that you guys think we should do to this PVP room to make it into a good PVP map, let me know in the comments. Use code RCL1 and uh, RCL Man out. I'll see you next week.